this is all india radio in the program spotlight now we bring you a discussion on new strides in food processing sector the participants are meetu kapoor executive director food and agriculture center of excellence at confederation of indian industry and ruchika chitravanshi journalist in the last week uh, the food processing industry ministry has organized a week dedicated to food processing we have seen a lot of projects that have been launched uh, across the state and one of the things that uh, the minister has said that if the farmer gets the right price for the agricultural produce then the processed food is exported worldwide in that case it will strengthen the indian food processing sector ms kapoor can you tell us about what are the projects that have been launched and how do you think they are going to help the food processing sector as you are aware the ministry has been really focused on creating the right environment for food processing and we had the pm fme scheme that was launched which has a 10000 crore allocation and it is focused on upgrading actually micro food enterprises in food processing just in the last few weeks like you said we have seen projects being launched across the country ranging from products like tomatoes spices etc a lot of focus has been given to those who are looking at upgrading their units similarly in terms of providing support around capacity building as well as branding and marketing for these units as well another important piece i think is you know the focus on one district one product that the government has brought in which is really allowing us to be able to build scale as well so for instance you know if in the certain state you have spices which is really important then the impetus is being given to be able to build entire infrastructure across those so who are the people who will get benefit uh, from this because obviously there are self help groups there are uh, farmers of course uh, and there's also a lot of talk about the kind of employment that this will generate what kind of opportunities do you see arising out of this the scheme is open to entrepreneurs it is open to farmer producer organizations self help groups also get additional support and focus under this in terms of investment for common infrastructure that they can create for their units as well as for branding and marketing so really anyone that is looking to set up enterprise as a local entrepreneur it could also be a farmer that is you know now branching off into creating a value added product who is eligible and the same is with farmer producer companies or organizations and self help groups so any micro food entrepreneur is eligible to be able to apply for this the food processing industry is being the largest creator in terms of employment while in the organized you know space we have about 20 lakh people employed but if you look at food processing in the way it is semi organized and in some cases unorganized more than 50 lakh people today are already employed in this sector just in the unorganized sector so the potential is huge imagine even if each of these micro enterprises hires four five people the employment it can create in terms of value but more importantly also for our farmer in terms of being able to source directly from farmers and the contribution to their incomes as well So the food processing sector contributes more than 12% to India's GDP and it provides both direct and indirect uh, employment so there's a lot of opportunity there and uh, the output uh, i believe uh, is expected to reach 535 billion dollars by 2025 26 mr kapoor can you tell us a little bit about what do these projects entail like for the uninitiated what does it mean that these food processing projects have been set up in so many states and uh, why particular states have been selected for this the selection of the states and the commodities is based on the fact that you know there is a richness so for instance in a certain state if you have say tomatoes that may be growing in a certain district in punjab which has a higher productivity there is surplus production there it makes sense for us to be able to create further value in terms of being able to not only process it but also eventually link it to export so the selection of the one district one product has been based on the surplus availability of the raw material which is very very important to be able to also make it viable for someone who is looking to set up a food processing plant there are various stages you have to first collect the produce from the farmer so you might set up a simple collection center you might need some cold chain facility structure to be able to create a cold storage for storage you will then of course need some kind of a manufacturing unit which again you know you have the government also has mega food parks the scheme that was created which also create a lot of common infrastructure for people who want to be able to set up units so you don't have to go in and set up all the enabling infrastructure of you know pollution management approvals for electricity all of that infrastructure is common infrastructure is available to you and you can then go ahead and set up your units so there are now multiple avenues 
for someone who is looking to be able to get into the food processing industry. And this I'm talking really at a micro food enterprise level. We, of course, have several large established companies and these micro food enterprises can then also get integrated into the supply chain of some of these larger companies as well. Some of the challenges that the food processing industry has been facing, especially in the pandemic, there has been shortage of labor, there have been supply chain gaps because we've had lockdowns, many factories have remained shut. So what is the way forward that you see out of these challenges? Which the agriculture and food industry was actually the first one to be able to be classified, you know, as essential items. And the government put all its focus to ensure that there was no disruption when it came to logistics and movement of food. The ministry got actively involved even in working alongside with the state government to ensure that factories kept running to make sure there was no impact when it came to our citizens. But of course, in certain areas where you know, things became very difficult during the pandemic, a lot of protocol had to be followed. And there was some shortfall you know, in terms of being able to distribute in certain states, certain cities. But that again, after you know a lot of support from the state governments and the central government, it was resolved. What shifts it has created, I think it has opened up the avenues to be able to look at how do we use also the role of technology, create more value addition. You know, and that is where when we look at food processing machinery, that is one opportunity for us. Today, a lot of our food processing machinery, for instance, is imported. And how do we look at indigenous machines being available so we have a better role of technology? People have also, you know, resorted. This also technology is not just a substitute, but it is really an enabler to be able to upskill the people that are also working on the shop floor. Because with the pandemic, we had to have much more focus on safety, quality, assurance. And so we found a lot more focus going into those areas, which actually creates you know, more opportunities for employment as well. As we speak today, you know, demand is buoyant. The industry is doing well, running at capacity. If you now look at what the government has done with the announcement of the production link incentive scheme, which is to also focus on exports, this is giving another impetus to the industry to be able to augment its capacity, better utilize its capacity, and focus really on processing more of our perishables. So one big narrative has been that a lot of our processing that has happened so far in our country has been you know, around cereals. We have not been able to reach the levels of processing we need when it comes to fruits and vegetables, for instance, or more processing that could happen in our milk and milk products. And so the production linked incentive scheme is now bringing a specific focus into these sectors so that we are able to see much more processing happening in these areas, which more importantly than anything will also reduce our wastage levels which has been a big challenge in this industry. That is very, very well pointed out that we have to diversify from simply producing uh, certain crops and cereals, as you mentioned. Are the steps that have been taken by the food processing uh, industry, especially in the last week, how are we encouraging uh, diversification? And what needs to be done to ensure that our exports uh, of these products are uh, encouraged and they increase in the coming years? On exports, the most important piece is to be able to build our brand, to be able to build brand India when it comes to food in terms of assurance of quality and safety, which is going to be exceedingly important for us. And you're right, you know, while of course there's support coming in from the government to be able to support some of that in terms of branding and marketing, but we will have to be able to work more cogently to create a national strategy on how we promote food from India. So, you know, while individual companies make their efforts, How do we ensure that that assurance is provided? And for that, we will have to continue to invest in terms of safety, in terms of quality assurance. And more importantly, we will have to start working much more closely with the farmers. And there I say, for instance, you know, traceability is very important when you, for instance, export products. People want to understand what are the pesticide residue levels, you know, what are the contaminant levels, where does it come from? And so working hand in hand with the farmers to ensure they're provided the right tools in terms of the right practices that they should implement so that our products are developed of quality and we continue to be able to reduce the level of rejections we face because each time you might have a rejection on account of quality, it does also dent the image of the country. And so I think a lot more focus on traceability, ensuring safety, and compliance, we will have to continue to focus on if we have to build a brand for our country when it comes to processed foods. Do you think that India needs to transform its 
food system? Do we need to be more inclusive and sustainable? And how will it impact farmer incomes and the security of nutrition for our country? As we speak, we are doing a national dialogue around the food systems as well over the next few days. And what happens often is that we look at things in silos. So we might have production in terms of agriculture, which might be focused on the farm side. We have the food processing industry, which is you know focusing on value addition, reducing food waste. And then, of course, you have very importantly, like you pointed out, nutrition. And until we don't connect these three pieces, we will really not be able to unlock the value that we need to. So, for instance, nutrition really starts from soil health. And so if I want to be able to uh, deliver the products to our citizens, if we want to be able to do that, that are nutritious, we have to go back to look at seeing how it connects with soil health. Similarly, in terms of looking at practices when it comes to food waste and food loss, So we are not able to look at the aspect of infrastructure, cold chain, which also increases the shelf life of foods in several instances, helps us to retain the nutritional value of these foods. It will allow us to deliver much more affordable nutrition to our citizens as well. And so I think while we're making significant effort in each of these areas, there is a lot of things that are moving. We're also seeing lots more integration happening. But we will have to be able to, I think, create far more convergence in integrating the role of agriculture with nutrition. Uh, Yes, we have been looking at nutri-cereals. Yes, we are looking at biofortified crops, for instance. The food processing ministry and industry is looking at fortified staples. But still starting at the end of the day from our citizens, what is it that they need? in terms of nutrition. And more importantly, we have the resources. So where are we planting our crops today as water tables are getting degraded? There are water intensive crops that will need diversification. So a lot does need to be done. You know, while the focus today is on making sure there is income resilience, affordability in terms of food being delivered to our citizens at reasonable prices, which are all very, very important. But uh, there is a lot more we will have to do especially as we also look at the risks of climate change and making sure that our agriculture becomes much more climate resilient will be very, very important to ensure that we continue to you know, ensure food security for our nation as well. Very interesting points there. Now, Ms. Kapoor, you're obviously you're heading the food vertical of the CII and you must be interacting with so many industry people. If there are some suggestions that you would like to make to the government, what is the kind of policy intervention that you would like to see across food systems, what would you suggest to the government? Chika, when we look at uh, policies in the last two to three years, we've seen a lot of enablement. You know, we've seen on the agriculture side focus on ensuring that there's more aggregation and efficiencies brought in onto the farm side. We've also seen now, you know, signals from the government in terms of incentivizing more investment through the PLI scheme. There are challenges that remain cost of logistics in the country still remains a challenge. And while the focus, of course, and the Ministry of Food Processing has tried to look at it through their tops to total scheme, where they are now supporting the movement of perishables, but infrastructure and logistics, and more importantly, multimodal logistics will need the right policy framework and incentives to be put in place. So whether you use rail, whether you use road, whether you use waterways, and looking at integrating what we can do with the logistics department, as well as various other agencies, On exports, again, you know, we have seen the PLI come in. I think implementation is what we will have to watch out for and make sure that that is done effectively for us to harness everything. Policy, you know, always signals. And I think the signals are there in terms of the framework we need. But it is really about now execution, where all stakeholders will have to have play their equal role when it comes to implementation and execution. And of course, there are lots of other things that are happening in the food industry as consumers are becoming more aware. So consumers want to know what they're eating, where it's coming from, what is the nutritional value of the food that they're eating. They want more choices. So I think the framework of R&D and innovation also needs a lot more focus in terms of our policy. How do we incentivize more research and development, more innovation, handhold our entrepreneurs when it comes to that? Because that will be very, very important for us going forward. So I think these are some of the areas where we would need to focus more, especially as we look at sustainable growth. Thank you so much, Ms. Kapoor, for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you so much. You were listening to a discussion on new strides in food processing sector. The participants were Meetu Kapoor, Executive Director, Food and Agriculture, Center of Excellence at Confederation of Indian Industry and Ruchika Chitravanshi, Journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division 
of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks@gmail.com.